Hi, and welcome to this talk on contributing to the PX4 docs. Uh, I'm Hamish Willey, this guy. I'm the core dev team member responsible for documentation of PX4, View Ground Control, Mavlink, and Mav SDK. I'm essentially the go-to guy to answer questions and help you with contributing to documentation within the PX4, Hue Ground Control and Mavlink communities. So today I'm going to talk about why contributing to docs is so important and also what docs you can contribute to as part of this community. I'm going to explain how you can help, what documentation you can improve, what sorts of things need fixing. And then I'm going to give you a quick demo and overview of how to do little edits, bigger edits, raise issues for things that you're not sure how to fix, and also the translation tool chain. Everything I'm covering today is also in the documentation, of course, under contribution documentation. Contributing to the documentation is really important because it saves time and effort overall for the project. It allows us to retain information uh, once developers leave. It allows us to onboard new developers and answer questions without having to go back to the core development team every single time. And also it allows us to highlight the features uh, that we're inventing so that people can come and use them, uh, which they can't do if they don't know about them. So when I refer to the docs, what do I mean? Uh, essentially this set that you can see on the screen, uh, the PX4 user and developer guides, the QGC user and developer guide, and the Mavlink and Mav SDK guides. Uh, these all use the same Gitbook legacy toolchain to compile text files written in Markdown into HTML. Uh, the source files are stored and managed in GitHub, just like application source code, and this gives us a really reliable way of managing bugs and contributions. If you're wondering how you ha can help, the best way that anybody can help is not to ignore any problems that they see. So if you see a broken link or a spelling error or a grammatical error, then please fix it. If you're working on an area and you find something's a bit confusing perhaps or missing content, particularly if you have to ask for help on how to answer it, then or how it works, then take the information you get back from the development team and try and integrate that back into the documentation. And that will help everybody else who is in working on that in future. If you're working on new features, then remember that they're not particularly useful necessarily if nobody knows about them or knows how to use them. Perhaps if you're working on an area that already has some documentation, like companion computers, then you could extend that information uh, for your specific case. And last of all, if you do want to help, then introduce yourself on the Slack channel, X4 Slack documentation, and uh, let us know what you know and what you're interested in, and we'll try and help you find a documentation project. We make it really easy to fix and report problems by having these little icons on the top of every page. This icon, you click to uh, open a web editor in GitHub to fix the content and propose a solution. And this icon, you can click to create a bug report. And all you need is a free GitHub account. I'll show you how to use these buttons now. So to demo this, let's have a quick look at our main documentation page. And if I look at the menu, I see that there's a structural error here. Style guide should be at the same level as building the Gitbook locally. So I go to the very top of the page, I see my little edit icon, and I press that. And I'm taken to the master version of the documentation. Note, not an older version, but the current head revision. And you can see here my markdown. Uh, interesting things to notice about markdown is firstly that headings are preceded by a hash, which indicates how many levels they are. So this is a level one heading contributing to documentation, level two heading for quick changes. I can see uh, numbered lists are prefixed by one dot and I don't have to number them, that happens automatically, and everything underneath has to be indented. I have this note, anything that's formatted with an, a carrot, and bold, it says note or tip, and then some text will be rendered as a pretty uh, note box in the main version. Bullets, they're simply done as asterisks. 
I can use three back ticks to highlight code. Anyway, I wander down here and I see that the style guide is indented. That's level two heading and preceded by a level three heading. And I'll just make this into a level two heading as well. I can preview my changes. If I wander down here, you can see that something has changed. If I change some words, I would see uh, the changes highlighted, what was removed and what was added. Now at the bottom, I have a commit message that I have to add. Now it's important here to add something short and concise that helps people understand what change was made. So I'm going to say contributing docs, uh, fixed up heading levels. So what you'll do is commit a new branch and you might give it a meaningful name like uh, contrib and then propose change. And that has now created a commit, which is a change that you want to make. You could have a, a multiple, com multiple commits in a pull request. And this is a pull request I'm creating now, which just includes this one commit that I just created, changing the style guide. And so now I'm just going to say, uh, the heading levels were incorrect. I create that pull request and then I will hit squash and merge. And that change has now gone live into the master branch. And in about 10 minutes, this will rebuild with style guide at the same level as these other headings. Now, that was making a quick edit. It really is as simple as that. You make the, you click the button, you make the edit in the page, you create a meaningful commit, you create a meaningful PR statement, and then you press submit and it gets reviewed. If you're not sure exactly how to fix the page, then you can instead create a bug report. And you do that by pressing the little bug item on the top of every page. That opens an issue report, which has a link back to this particular page. So all you do is you update with a detailed explanation of the problem and possible solutions, and then select submit new issue. Uh, doing quick edits in GitHub is great for fairly small changes and contain changes that only affect one page. Uh, but if you have changes that are gonna affect a number of pages, or you want to change images, then it's much easier to download the source, modify it locally on your computer, and then re-upload it. Uh, you can do those sorts of things on GitHub if you want, uh, but it's a lot more fiddly. There are instructions for all of these things in the dev guide under contribution, documentation, and the sections get push documentation source code, and also building the git boot locally. I'm going to show you how to do this on Windows next. It's the same for Ubuntu and Mac OS, uh, just the dependency installation's a little different. Uh, and because the downloading is all a bit slow, I'm going to do it in faster than real time. In order to make our larger edit, we need to get the source down to our computer. And for that, we're going to need the Git tool, which we can get from gitscm.com. And there are download packages and instructions for the main operating systems. We're also going to need to download and install node.js from nodejs.org as we require that to use Gitbook. Now to get the source, we go to the library we're interested, in this case, the dev guide. And up the top of the page, uh, there is the GitHub button, which we click, and that takes us to the main repository. Now we could just duplicate this repository, but for managing change, what we do is we fork it by click, clicking the fork button. This takes a copy of the whole repository under your own area. And I've already done that on the Hamish Willey Dev Guide. So this is my copy of the main documentation set, and I am going to get it down to my computer by cloning it. So click clone button, then click this to copy the URL. Git clone, and that URL I just copied. Now I enter that directory, 
and I am going to do what's called creating a remote. And that remote is a pointer to the original documentation set. And it's going to be here called upstream. So it's git remote add upstream and then the URL. Now I need to do this because I'm about to make a change and I want to make that change to the very latest version of the documentation, not whatever I happen to have in my copy. So now I enter git checkout master to get the latest version of the branch. Then I do git fetch upstream master to fetch the latest version of master from the main documentation set. And then I enter git pull upstream master. And that pulls the changes into my local branch. So I now have exactly the same as upstream. And then I decide to make a change to the documentation. I create a branch to do that on. Git checkout dash b. That means I'm going to create a new branch. And I'm going to call it my changes and I'm going to check it out. Now git status shows me that I now have a clean tree and I'm on my new branch. While I'm here, I'm also going to install Gitbook. Um, first, I have to install the Gitbook client for my whole computer, which I do using the instruction npm install gitbook ply g. And I use the instruction gitbook install in the root of my current directory to use that client to install all the plugins. After Gitbook client has installed all the Gitbook plugins in my particular library, the dev guide, I can now serve it to view what the rendered version looks like by typing Gitbook serve. And now if I go to this URL, which it's serving the book on, HTTP localhost 400, I can see that indeed the rendered version of the documentation is indeed there. Now let's have a look inside our dev guide clone. At the top we have assets, that's where you should keep all of your images. There's no particular structure to these, though we would prefer that you put them in sensible folders. Uh, there's the EN folder, that's where all of our English translations are kept. And since everything is initially written in English, this is where your files are. Everything should be in a subfolder. And then last of all, we have summary. Summary is very important because anything that is not in the summary folder, but sorry, the summary.md file will not be rendered into HTML. Now I'm going to show you how I might make a quick edit. Uh, for example, I might go to the setup folder and copy one of the existing documents. And as a placeholder, and I'll just call it Fred. Open Fred and put in Fred topic and some content. As you can see here. And I save that and I go to my summary file. And up here under getting started, I'm going to add. Fred. Now I'm going back to my companion prompt and I can see that I'm no longer serving my uh, gitbook. So I'll reserve it. And now I can go back to my localhost generated version of Gitbook, and if I open Getting Started, I can see my new document, Fred, has appeared in the sidebar. So now I exit out of Gitbook, and I go Git Status, and I can see my changed documents. So I can do add them individually, but instead I'm going to add them together with Git Add Dot. Now you can see that those two are, are part of, are ready together to be committed. So Git, Git commit dash m and I put a message adding a Fred commit 
you would do something more meaningful. And then I push my changes to my repository using git push origin my changes. If I come back to my repository on GitHub, I now have this notification about that push I just made. And that makes it very easy to click compare and pull request. And here I can make, I can have a quick look at the changes I made and I can put in a, descript, a description of this uh, particular change that I've made. And when I'm ready, I select create pull request. And that then is handled in review and discussion in the same way as the quick edit. Translation is another great contribution you can make to the community. Uh, we have teams working on all the libraries, including Mavlink and QGround Control Developer Guide and the PX4 User Guide, and also QGround Control itself. All translation is done in Crowdin. The source text is in English in GitHub and gets synced into Crowdin, translated and approved, and then once approved, uh, GitHub will create push requests to push the different translations into subfolders in GitHub. Uh, what's great about this is that Crowdin manages change. If we change the source uh, strings in the English version, then the output will include those English strings until the content gets retranslated. And that means that, okay, we may have lost some translated information, but at least the content is always up to date that is translated. And we can see these files in the dev guide on GitHub. Here we have the EN English tree, which has all the original source files underneath it. And here we have uh, translated files for German and Spanish and Japanese and so on. Further down, we have langs.md. Langs.md defines what is actually built by Gitbook. And you can see that we only build English and Chinese because Chinese has the most translations. And we'll add the others as more work is done. Uh, if you want to build a particular translation locally, you can always add a line here uh, yourself. Now we can have a quick look at that in Crowdin. Here I am in the PX4 Developer Guide project. There are other projects that I'm a member of. I can see what languages are available and I can see what levels translated. And if I select, for example, on Chinese Simplified, I can view uh, either all strings or I can view particular files. And here I can see a what you see is what you get version and I can click any string that I want. And I can enter a translation for that if I wish. And it gives me some suggestions. And I can also look at existing translations. Now, as an approver, you will also be offered at the, below this option to approve something. And usually you'll have a team of two people. Somebody will be an approver for the other person's translations and vice versa. And you click this, and that's what makes this particular translation go public. I can also filter on various things. Uh, for example, here, if I only want to see things that are untranslated or only want to see things that are not approved or approved, I can do that too. So translation is pretty straightforward, but if you do need help or you have any questions, perhaps you want to create your own team, uh, then you can get help using the translation channel on PX4 Slack. Thank you very much for listening. I hope uh, I've convinced you all that contributing to docs is a really good idea and giving you some uh, ideas of how it's done. Uh, remember that all this information is again in contribution documentation in the PX4 Dev Guide. And if you have any questions, we will answer them if you post them in PX4 Slack uh, documentation or translation channels.